talk us through your your practice and kind of going through short film and why now for your first feature and why Moon 66 Questions? Yes, <clears throat> talking through my process is always um, chaotic because the process has been chaotic as well. I'm a Greek filmmaker making films in Greece. So this in itself is deeply problematic uh, <laughs> given the mentality, the, 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 the delays and you know, a series of problems that uh, all filmmakers uh, tend to face. However, I really want to make it. I really love my job. I love making films. And in the short film world, somehow you can make things work. You can call up your friends. It's not 30 day shoot, it's just a five day shoot. So you can somehow find ways to make short films. However, it's almost impossible to find ways to shoot uh, feature films because the days are longer, the budget is different, you know, the whole scale shifts. So you have to shift your own process. And um, I knew I would, I w this would be my first feature film before I shot my shorts. But at the same time, I knew that I had to create a base and to learn and to discover view on my film language before you know, entering this journey. I don't know how this film would be realized if I hadn't shot all of my short films and if I hadn't explored the medium's uh, possibilities. That's interesting that this was always going to be your first feature. So yes. how long have you, has this story uh, been sitting with you and what was the development process like to get it to, to what it is? Yes, uh, this story has been sitting with me uh, since 2012, actually, 19th of June. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Uh, is when I came back from London. I was a student here and I came back to Greece to meet um, not this guy, another guy, that's my father. And so I knew that, uh, you know, going through this process, uh, I knew that this, not this, but this story would definitely be um, the core of my first feature film because it was such a, it is such a significant story for me and my life and my story. Um, and the development was a bit um, complicated in the sense that I went to many labs, uh, screenwriting labs, uh, because I, uh, you know, I was in this hype that I should do that and it helps you to meet people and network and stuff. Um, so in this space of development, in a way, some time was lost, I think. Mm -hmm. But when I think of this, I have another voice telling me, but no, you matured. And, you know, so it was a very complicated thing. And the biggest delay that we had was that we submitted for Development Fund in October 2017, because I want to shoot in 2018. And the reply from the Greek Film Center was in June 2019. Wow. For <laughs> Development Fund, for the 10,000 euros that they give. So. Uh, this is just a sign to tell all of you uh, that it's very hard. Uh, so the development process is not led by me necessarily. Mm -hmm. It's a combination of factors that I cannot control. Yeah. So talking about the actual film, um, obviously moon, astrology, tarot, there's a lot of these sort of motifs that, that you're obviously very attracted to. Can you talk us through um, your sort of intentions behind those in the film? Uh, moon... It was not there as a astrology, astronomy fact. Uh, astronomy fact could be because <laughs> Moon is Earth satellite, and in the film Artemis is always around her father because anytime he may fall, or something may happen. We have all these cir circular shots also that you have a real 360, so you mm -hmm. have a real orbit. So Moon was there for this reason, and also because. Um, it was indeed a full moon when I found out something about my father, so I knew that, anyway, moon as a planet and me, we have a particular relationship. I, I love moon. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it affects me somehow. It affects everyone, actually, but I'm very conscious about it. So this is one part. Mm -hmm. And about the astrology and the tarot, uh, because I don't want to be misunderstood, it's not the character that is into these things. It is a, a system in the film that I tried to build trying to very discreetly imply that there is another dimension to things mm. sometimes and maybe, not with any deterministic manner, for sure. Um, additionally, I really love deeply the visual imagery of the tarot cards. I, I find them 
mesmerizing. I don't know how to explain it. I don't know. I don't know how to throw them. I don't know how to read between them. But I'm drawn to the imagery, and they had to be in the film. So I imagine that the way they were shot, we're having a break, and we're having lunch, and uh, we had the, the deck there because we knew that somehow the deck would be used at some point. And I call Constantinos, my cinematographer, and I tell them, I tell him, let's shoot them now. Let's just shoot them somehow. And he was like, okay, let's shoot them. And it was just a super uh, casual, out of the schedule uh, shooting that happened with the tarot cards. And in the editing, we tried experiments on, on locating them. And this is how they became part of the film. Wow, they were stitched in yeah. that way. I love it. I feel like we can't talk about this film without talking about Sophia Kofakali, uh, your lead. Um, I noticed at the beginning of the film, you know, it's, the credits come up and it says a, a, a Jacqueline Lorenzo film with uh, Sofia Kofakali, and that sort of implies of a really close collaboration, which I think you can see on the screen. Can you talk us through working with Sofia? How did you find Sofia? Did you work uh, closely together on, on, you know, the characterization? How did it work? So I found Sofia uh, through a theatrical play that I don't usually uh, attend because I'm not into theater, at least into Greek theater. It's a very particular thing. But when I th was there, I remember I could not believe in my eyes because she was not really doing something flamboyant or extraordinary. It was her uh, presence on stage. I could see around her something. Uh, it, it's the energy we were talking before. And I was, I was like, what's going on? And uh, what was fun is that a couple of weeks before, she had come to me in a festival telling me that she watched, she watched Fox, my first short film, and she loved the film, blah, blah. But back then I was very young and I thought everyone was lying to me about uh, my <laughs> film. So I was like, okay, you know, another liar. But then, I, <laughs> but then I saw her and I'm like, okay, this liar you know, has something. And I talked to her and I'm like, um, you're amazing, she said, you're amazing, ah, let's do something. And this is how Hector Malo, the last day of the year was made. Uh, our first collaboration, a short film shot in 2018. Mm -hmm. And uh, it worked like that. Then in the meanwhile, we became friends, which is a very interesting part of my process. I, I am a very friendly person, or I really enjoy working with my friends or making my collaborators friends. I really value friendship as a relationship. Mm -hmm. So she became one of my best friends. And then we moved into The End of Suffering, A Proposal, which is an experimental short film we made before shooting Moon, two months before. And for two months, between The End of Suffering and Moon, I didn't see her. So Sophia was like texting me and messaging me. I'm like, no, because I really wanted to create a distance and to prepare myself also, because it was a big thing I was about to do. So she knew nothing. I mean, she knew the story, but yeah. she knew nothing about the particular scenes and stuff. So the credits go to the fact that when I was writing these scenes, she was always on my mind. Like, I, I was thinking, hey, could she do it? Will she like it? And then I was going writing it. Uh, and not actually because we did it together. Um, but she really inspired me. So I could not not have her in my credits. I think that's so beautiful to, to hear that story behind that. Thank you for, for sharing. Um, we are going to do audience questions, so uh, if you have one, get ready. Uh, but before I throw it out and while you uh, think of your questions, I would like to squeeze in a question about the VHS footage. I, I love that. I love the, the, the texture of that, uh, particularly at the beginning of the film. Did you shoot that on VHS or did you, you, you shot it I, on a camcorder? Yes. So it's not a post effects or edits, you actually... I literally shot it on, with my hands. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing, the skiing, the, the lion. Everything. Amazing. I was with my cinematographer, of course, because he needed to hold the battery because we couldn't find <laughs> a really good VHS uh, camera, camcorder. So the camcorder was coming with a, a battery that you had to hold. So Constantinos was holding the, the battery and I was shooting and he was feeling very weird about it, but uh, he liked it at the end. <laughs> Amazing. And why was it important to do it on an actual camcorder? First of all, I, um, I adore old school camcorders. I adore the texture and I think it cannot be imitated. I mean, I understand that technology, yes, has progress and stuff and you can do stuff in post. I always see that it's fake. Always. Mm. So when my producer was like, let's shoot it with this and then you put a filter. I'm like, no, no, no. You have to have the, the true, honest 
break of the digital thing, you know? It's very specific. I love it. And uh, I grew up with VHS and Hi8. My first camera was a Hi8 camcorder, which I still have. And this is how I started exploring the world. I mean, uh, I think this is how, why I, I make films, to be honest, because of this camcorder. So it could not be something else. I love that because you can tell there is something. There is something, you know. And, and, can't and, describe, and, but you know it's. And it gives you a very subtle and unconscious idea that indeed these things belong to the past. Mm. Which was very important to have the past as an essence in the film, not as a time spot necessarily, as an essence, a past essence, because it's her childhood, it's their past relationship. So I needed this mood. And I'm happy when I hear people uh, read through it. Yeah. There's a couple of scenes, I think there's probably about three scenes which I absolutely adore in your film. I'll start with two which are adjacent, which is, I really love um, the scene where you start with the aerial shot and it's um, above the table and the family are sat around and Artemis is doing... Black hole. Yes. It's a black hole, this shot. Yes. And Artemis is uh, sort of being made to learn how to care for her father in front of everybody. There's all this expectation and and when they come together he's putting his whole weight on her and it feels like this is a pivotal shift in in their relationship it's a pivotal shift in in the story um there's just so much going on in that scene and then you cut to the hose scene the the the, the dancing uh, could you talk us through the process of both of those scenes and the sort of the movement in each of them and how how you approached that first one because it's so complex with that with that aerial shot and then moving into the camera is moving with them. Yes. Thank you, first of all, for uh, very precisely reading through all the scenes' purposes already. <laughs> I have nothing to add. You really right. described it perfectly. <laughs> um, yes. This shot, the black hole shot, the real shot, lasts 25 minutes. Oh, wow. Because I shot all the scene initially from a top shot. I want to be a top shot because I wanted the way he entered to remind the funeral. So you have somehow elements of the family, but wow. he's on the ground. However, it was amazingly long. And my editor is very good. <laughs> so she said, Jackie, yes, I understand your point. If you want people to watch it, cut it. I'm like, OK, let's do it. So we cut it. And then it was a very tricky situation to find our ways through the rest of the shots because of the length of the real shots. Mm. Because I, in this film, I. I thought time was so important to understand the physical disability. I really wanted people to really see how hard it is not be able to walk, mm -hmm. not to imply it, to see it. And it's hard. And that's why some people tell me, it's slow. I'm like, yes, it's very slow to have multiple sclerosis. It's not fast. <laughs> it takes some time. So I really want to be honest with the time passes. Uh, so it was very hard to edit. What we knew from the beginning with my editor, he's a very good editor, is that we wanted in this film to at the same time show that this is the point where Artemis realizes the real gravity of the situation, okay? And at the same time, the guy really shows to everyone the degree of his problem. Mm -hmm. So if you want, it's the scene that we see it all. Because the rest of the film is a bit hidden. Mm. This is where you see it all. And um, the dancing scene yes. in the script was not necessarily written after this one. Ah. We tried other scenes afterwards, but the cut from this difficulty to this, if you want freedom and um, <coughs> wild animal in a cage energy, was really uh, fitting to each other. And it created an antithesis, that, uh, a contradiction that really works for me. Because this film has many contradictions. I mean, she's there but you can see her somewhere else and she's sad but then she's not sad it is a contrasty film in a way the, the textures are contrasting each other so these two together worked good at an emotional level i hope and that the the dance scene um how did you approach that with sophia because she looks like she's just doing her own thing giving it her own energy and the camera is following her is it as simple as that, or did it take a lot of rehearsing and staging? It was no rehearsal. It's wow. one, one take, and it's this one. Amazing. And the initial shot was 12 minutes. 
<laughs> and the because, take. because I wanted to be one take where she I didn't want to be dancing mm. I did I, I, I didn't want this film to be a film where you had all the expectations so I didn't want a burst out show, a scene that the protagonist goes crazy I wanted to be more of a meditative scene where she's in this house she's playing with the water which is something very unconscious and then the song enters and then she gradually goes there so I didn't want to be like a cat this is why it starts with water and stuff. Yeah. And she gradually enters to the song. But there was no rehearsal, nothing, because I told her, just dance. She was like, what What do you mean? I'm like, just dance. Because there are some awkward moments in the dance that I love. Sophia doesn't like them. Oh. She wanted to be on the rhythm. I'm like, we're not making music video. It has to be a sad <laughs> film at some point. And this is a sad scene. I'm like, okay. Oh. Mm -hmm. Talking of one takes and getting it right this leads me to my other sort of uh my third favorite scene i'd say from the film which is the car and the car hitting the wall <laughs> that's another long take and it looks like you only had one car so was yes. that did you only have one shot to get that yes. amazing how did you prepare for that i'm a risky person <laughs> <laughs> you, you can see you can all in we had one car one wall <laughs> very little money one actress everything was one and, that, and Sophia's, she's on her own, she's driving. That. She's really driving and we had no, because I didn't want to be visible, we had no ropes to tie her in the thing. So she knew that if she would do it wrong, she would probably harm herself. Wow, that is <laughs> quite a risk. How do you prepare someone for that? <laughs> you do not. You, ju you just announce it this moment, you know, because if you prepare people, mind takes over and too many scenarios take place, no. The less they know, the better it is. You know? <laughs> it's a Amazing. key for all filmmakers. <laughs> the less they know, the better. But also, the real shot, it's 20 minutes. <laughs> I, I mean, knew you were going to say that. She was going, no, because you see, in the parking uh, lot, this garage that we had, if you see at the edge, there is a hole. Yes, the, a little dip. The because the house, go in. The, the house we had found, uh, the guy's a collector of cars, so he had a specialized thing to fix his car or something. So this is a place where you put your car and you change the wheel. I, I don't drive, so I don't know. Something, <laughs> car thing. So when she was going back, she was afraid she would fall in the hole. So I was not happy with the going back and forth. It, it was very obvious that she knew. And I'm like, Sophia, I mean, if you don't do it, we will do it forever. She was like, okay. That was it. Amazing. And it happened. First of all, to be very honest, I didn't really choose it. I had to shoot my film and I had three options. So it's not a matter of choice. I knew that I wanted a middle class house to show the financial uh, status of the father. Of course, it was very important for the film to know that he was a well-off person, right? And I wanted a house that would give me um, ways to separate them or to connect them. And this house indeed, it's a house that many people should in Greece, unfortunately. Uh, it, it is a architect, architecturally very interesting. It has some very nice walls. It has these holes in the, um, in the walls, again, that you can see through. There are many things that you can do. And also you have the greenery around, you said, that somehow reminds you all of the time that life keeps going, mm -hmm. which is a very important, not message, because I'm not a messenger of anything, but it's an important thing for me to, to you want, promote throughout my films that no matter what life around keeps going and it's important to know that and not get too self-absorbed in our own small problems and worlds. Mm -hmm. um, so this is more or less about the house. And, and a very important thing is that I really wanted the corridor that they would be together, not together at the same time, because I want them to, to share and at the same time not share the space. This is why mm -hmm. I, need, I, I knew I needed a big space from the beginning. Because if this film would take place in a small apartment, let's say, that it was another option, you c I could not set out the initial distance in order to build the, finan the, the, the final uh, reconciliation. As I told Kim initially, I traveled a lot uh, to development labs, script mm -hmm. development labs, and in one of the labs, Indeed, I was super lucky, more than lucky, grateful to have as a mentor Paul Thomas Anderson. Ooh. So we had breakfast two days and a coffee the third day. 
and uh, he's a very cool guy and actually he read the script and no I'm not joking he told me you have it you need no no advice from me I'm like thank you Paul <laughs> <laughs> wow yes he was he was Congrats. really and also he told me that the script reminded him of his own Manolia which is a huge compliment I mean there's no uh, comparison of course but this is what he said it's a fact you can ask him <laughs> that's so cool <laughs> but about my references it's an amazing question because when I mention my references no one says mm, I can see that and I feel sad so I love Gaz Van Sant this is how I started actually my journey this is when I decided to become a filmmaker is after watching Elephant when I was 14 that was it I, I love I love the silence I love the pacing I love everything um, I love Santa Lackerman, with whom I share the same birthday, 6th of June. <laughs> and I love uh, Casavetis, which I think it's a bit obvious, in the sense that, I mean, for me it's obvious because I kind of, I was working in a, sep a particular way in my short films, and then someone talks about Casavetis, and I, I watched some documentaries, and I heard him saying that I don't want to um, rehearse, I prefer to improvise and see on the spot. And I was doing this without knowing he's doing this. So we have this common ground of not staging stuff that much until at this point. Maybe in the future I will make a script, uh, I will make a film that it will require some staging. At the moment I'm more into just seeing how it works and how people are. And I love um, a French one, which is not a fiction filmmaker, but I love him, uh, Chris Marker. These are my references. Are they obvious? I don't know. If they are, I'm very happy. I feel like Elephant and Gus Van Sant, considering how long your takes are, that seems like... <laughs> I at least could see a connection there. <laughs>